Okay, let's look at this question that you asked for guidance on. <clears throat> now, read this the resultant of the vectors. So that means A and B is combined. And it's saying it's parallel to this vector C. Okay, now if I can try to break down this question so you can understand, 4i and minus 5j is going to be something like this. Four i minus five j. That's c. It's going to look something like four i cross five down. So that's like travelling like this, okay? Where it's got four i this way and minus five j. So what they're saying is, in fact, a and b combine. So a plus b is actually going to be parallel and going this way as well. Now we have unknown p in both to find it. Now when vectors are parallel, so for example 4i minus 5j, a vector that's going to be parallel is going to have some kind of multiple scalar, m or k. So the answer is going to look like something like this. That's the resultant of um, a, b, because we don't know what p is. It's going to be in this form. So we've got to equate the i's and equate the j's. So essentially a plus B is going to be in the form of M 4i minus 5j and that will make it parallel to C which is 4i minus 5j and that should make sense so first thing we can do is what is A plus B together so A plus B we going to equate the eyes okay equate equate the eyes so what are we going to get 2p plus 6 so 2p plus 6 has to be equivalent to 4m because of C is here, right? Now we can do that with the J's. Let's ignore that bit there. The J is minus 3P and minus 5. It's got to be equivalent to what I've said here. Some form of M times 5J. So that's just going to be minus 5M because we don't need the J's there. This is uh, equating the components for i this is i this is j so we've got two equations here so we have to use simultaneous equations and then you can cancel out m or p okay so what's easier it doesn't matter which way so what can we let's times this by five let's times all this by four so what we're going to get is minus 12p minus 20 equals minus 20m. That times by 5 is 10p plus 30 equals 20m. That's equation 1. Let's call this equation 2. So what is 1 add 2? If I'm going to write 2 underneath, minus 12p minus 20 equals minus 20 see that's equation 2 so if we do 1 add 2 equation 1 add equation 2 the m's will cancel okay so we get left with minus 2p plus 10 equals 0 so that means 2p equals 10 and that means P equals 5. Good, that's a quite straightforward 4 out of 4 marks. So let's show you where you get the method marks from. Equating this, understanding that, that's your M1, M2. Doing a simultaneous equation part is M3, and obviously this is your accuracy mark here. That wasn't too bad, was it? Now, 
It says B, find the resultant of the vectors A and B. So what do you think you have to do? Well now, for part B, let's keep the pen in green. We know P equals 5. So A is going to be 2 times 5, so that's 10i minus 5j. And B is going to equal 6i minus 15j. The resultant is adding them together. So A plus B equals 16i minus 20j. And that's your method one and answer one. That should make sense. Okay, let's have a look at this question. You've got a line with this equation, mx minus y minus 2 equals 0. Kind of like y equals mx plus c, right? And it says it touches a circle with equation x squared plus 6x plus y squared minus 8y equals 4. So that looks like an equation of a circle formula. So if it touches the circle, you need to recognise that this is what this means. It This could be a tangent at purple, touching it like this. It's asking for two possible values here of m. Or it could be like this touching yellow. The two points could be like this, touching a circle like so, right? So what's a good way that we can earn some marks? Well, let's write this in the form that we like, y equals mx plus c. So we, um, we rearrange this to y, we plus y on both sides, equals mx minus 2. Now that actually gets you a method mark right there. Now, if they're touching, or if any two lines are touching, it's like a simultaneous equation, right? They, this is going to equal this. So we can sub into the circle, sub into circle. So what do we get? Sub y into this formula. So we're going to get x squared plus 6x plus y squared. So that's mx minus 2 squared minus 8 and now we're subbing y in so that's mx minus 2 equals 4 now obviously we're going to want to set this to 0 but let's expand this all out and I think that gives you an x method mark so let's expand this all out. x squared plus 6x. You're going to get plus mx squared uh, minus 4mx plus 4. That's expanding this section out here. Minus 8mx minus times minus is plus 16 equals 4. Now what can we, can we set this equal to zero? Yes, these fours will cancel. So we're gonna get x squared plus six x plus mx squared minus eight mx plus 16 equals zero. Now can we simplify some of these terms? Yes, we can that's going to go to minus 12 mx plus 16 equals 0 and we're going to have a 6x and the x squared plus this mx squared here plus right now we'll get in there now, can you see that this is almost a quadratic? Now, if we factorise these bits to make it in terms of x squared x and the constant 16, it will look like this. 
that'll be one plus m squared be very careful here x squared that's plus six put in a bracket minus 12 m x on the other side plus 16 equals zero now when we're solving quadratics do you remember we can use the discriminant We know it's got two solutions, so the answer should be greater than zero, right? So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. Now can we see we've got nicely, we've got a equals 1 plus m squared, b equals 6 minus 12m, and c equals 16. So obviously we're going to set b squared minus 4ac to 0 and see what we find and solve that. And that's going to give us the two possible values of m. So let's substitute that in really well. So we're going to get 6 minus 12m squared. So just using your b squared minus 4ac, we're going to get minus, there's your a here. 4 times 1 plus m squared times 16. Now, we need to be able to expand this out really well because it's going to become a quadratic. So remember this is going to be 6 minus 12m. 6 minus 12m. I mean, some of you could do this mentally and skip a step. Minus, I'm going to multiply that out now. 4 times 16 is 64. And minus 4m squared times 16 is minus 64m squared equals 0. This bit here is going to give us 36 minus 72m minus 72m and plus 144m squared. That's minus 64 minus 64m squared equals zero. Now let's simplify that. We've got 144 minus 64, so that's 80 m squared minus 144 m minus 64 add 36, so that's minus 28 equals zero. Can we simplify that? What number goes into that? Four. So we can divide this all by four. Uh, that gives us 20m squared minus 36m minus seven equals zero. That looks like it's going to be difficult to factorize so I'll use the quadratic formula. That's going to give you two answers. So A equals 20, B equals minus 36, C equals minus 7. Just show yourself substituting that in for your method marks, or you know, that's showing you're attempting a solution. So that's minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared, so minus 36 squared minus 4ac I mean minus oh it is minus 4ac so 4 times 20 times minus 7 let's put that all in a bracket that's a and that's c So this is going to turn into a plus. Showing that should be enough over 2a, which is 2 times 20. And then show your answers for m. Do remember just to type this in and then go back on your calculator instead of starting all over again. So m is going to equal 9 over 10 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 5. 
or it's going to equal depends how you want to write it 2 root 29 over 10 whatever your calculator shows that's acceptable that's your accuracy mark let's go for your marks I so said that's M1 M1 um, probably you're going to get a method here using your b squared minus 4ac that's another method you need to rearrange to get here so that's another method slash accuracy so that's one two three four five six and answer which is seven do try that question again it really works on your algebra skills Okay, as requested, we're writing this, going through this question now, as requested. So, honestly, do watch these videos. This is actually very easy marks. Question 13. It says, solve the equation Qx equals 0. So, Qx, so that means we'll just have to solve this. And do it in third form. So the easiest way is you could do quadratic form or we could just complete the square of it. it takes us no time at all. So that's going to get x minus 5 squared uh, minus 25 minus 20 so that's going to be 0 equals x minus 5 squared minus 45 so let's do uh, let's plus 45 on both sides so 45 equals x minus 5 squared that's part a so that's going to be square root plus or minus 45 equals x minus 5 so the next step is 5 plus or minus square root of 45 equals x now root 45 is root 9 times root 5 so that's 3 root 5 so that gets us in that form so the answer is 5 plus or minus 3 root 5 equals x so a equals 5 and b equals 5 that's method and answer mark that should not be too challenging b Sketch these graphs on the same set of axes. Label all the points where the curves intersect the coordinates in axis. So 3 minus a half x, that's a gradient of m equals minus 0 0.5 with a y intercept of y intercept of 3. So this should be easy to right as a straight line which is here right negative gradient um, obviously solve so I'll show you this bit so you need to solve for y equals 0 so if 0 equals 3 minus a half x um, a half x is going to equal 3 so um, x must equal 6 Hence, you get this point here. That's easily done. Now, you know you've got a quadratic. You've completed the square. So you know the solutions for x when y equals 0. Because that's what literally what you solve. So you plot that point from here. And then you draw your U-shaped quadratic. Because it's a positive quadratic. So that's just your graph sketching skill. So that should be a straight 4 out of 4 marks. Or at least a few marks where you can draw a straight line. I mean, that should be aced. Now it says, use an algebraic method for part C. Now that's answer to B. Use an algebraic method to find the coordinates of any points of intersections of the graphs. Y equals PX and Y equals QX. Well, when these two lines intersect, they must equal. So literally, all you need to start off with to get one mark is like 3 minus a half X equals X squared minus 10X minus 20 now if you ever get a question like this it really should just be a banker 
So anyway, what are we going to do? Let's plus a half x on both sides and set that to zero. So C continued. We're going to get zero equals x squared um, minus 9.5x as we're adding 0.5 to both sides. A half x to both sides and we're minusing 3, so minus 23. Now, you can use a quadratic formula, or I would probably just multiply this all by 2, both sides by 2, and that should work. So x squared minus 19x minus 46. Let's factorise that, it's going to be times that by 2, so it's going to be 2x squared, so you're going to get 2x minus 23, x plus 2. Do you use a quadratic form, maybe you're not very good at that, so that's still fine. Equals 0, so we know x is going to equal 11.5 and x equals minus 2 it doesn't want for the coordinates so obviously substitute this into any so sub into the easiest one sub into px so we know that when x equals minus 2 got to write the coordinates y is going to be 4 when you sub that in and when x equals 11.5 y is going to equal minus 11 over 4 and that is part c done now for part d write using set notation for the values of x which px is less than qx so let's look at this graph that would have helped you in b if you got this right when px is less than qx so this is px now can you see from here this is above qx this is qx here okay this graph here so from this intersection here you can see it's anything less than minus 2 and anything over here right and we've got the answers from c so to get, let's write D here, get one method mark. That is going to be when X is less than minus 2 or X is greater than 23 over 2. Okay, what we did here. Or you can write 11.5 or 11.5. Now in set notation, we can use this... Uh, bracket so when x is an element of real numbers are for real x is going to be less than minus 2 <coughs> that's control so that's that set of numbers that means the whole set of numbers that where well, x is less than minus 2 and when x is real and that u means or just complete in the other bracket with x is an element of real numbers as well and um, we say x is greater than 11.5 and that is another b1 mark and that is all the questions you asked me to go through on the year one as paper and these questions can come up in your pure papers so it's really important that you ace these because anything in year one maths must be your bank mark so you can do well in your A level. Do try these questions again because you do need to know all these skills for many different questions that you might have seen in mechanics. Your algebra skill will work for all your pure as well. So don't let these videos go to waste.